Hi, welcome to another video. So, Groke, the inference platform that offers some of the fastest speeds for open source models, has recently launched their own CLI, and I thought I'd talk about it as well. This one is called Groke Code CLI. It is a highly customizable, lightweight, and open source coding CLI powered by Groke for instant iteration. They are positioning it mostly as a blueprint, a building block, for developers looking to leverage, customize, and extend a CLI to be entirely their own. This is open source, and they say that you can actually customize the code base to make it entirely your own, which is pretty cool. You can add your own tools to it, change the UI, rename it, or do anything you want, and fork it to make it fully customizable to be just what you want. Even if you don't want to change anything, the CLI still seems to be pretty good. It comes equipped with all the features, tools, commands, and UI UX that are familiar from other CLIs as well, like Claude Code or Gemini CLI, or things like that. By default, it comes built in with the Groke API, but you can change it to use any API you want. You can also add custom slash commands and change anything in it as well. One of the main things that stands out is how lightweight the code base is compared to other coding CLIs. Most open source coding CLIs are packed with features, but that also means they're often quite large and can feel overwhelming if you want to make changes or understand how things work under the hood. Grok Code CLI, on the other hand, is intentionally designed to be much smaller and more approachable for developers who want to dig in, customize, or even just learn from the code. The project is structured in a way that makes it easy to add your own features. For example, if you want to create a new tool that the CLI can call, you just define a schema, implement the function, and register it. The same goes for slash commands. If you want to add a command for something like checking code complexity or resolving merge conflicts, you can do that by creating a new command definition and registering it in the CLI. This modular approach means you can really tailor the CLI to your own workflow without having to wade through a massive, tangled code base. Another thing is the flexibility in terms of which models you use. While it defaults to the Groke API and comes set up with models like Kimi K2, you can actually point it to different APIs or swap out the models as you see fit. This is useful if you're experimenting with different LLMs or want to integrate the CLI with your own hosted models. The user interface is also customizable. You can change the startup command, add your own ASCII art, or even fork the project and rename it entirely. The documentation actually encourages you to make it your own, whether that's just a few tweaks or a complete overhaul. And if you're just looking to use it out of the box, it works as a fast, responsive CLI for coding tasks with built-in support for chat, model selection, and a few handy commands. You get the benefits of Groke's inference speed, and you can use it in any directory or even have it help modify its own code base as you develop new features. Now, let's try to use it and see how well it performs. But first, let's talk about today's sponsor, Dart. Tired of juggling tasks across different tools? Dart combines traditional project management with powerful AI features that actually get work done. Beyond organizing tasks and boards, Dart's AI can brainstorm project ideas, generate task lists, and even complete entire assignments for you. Their composer-like AI agent understands your full project context, so you can simply chat with it to create, edit, or delete tasks naturally. The real game changer is the custom agents. You can create custom agents 
agents that trigger from the built-in integrations or a N8N workflow or custom webhook for full customization. You can create a coding agent that pushes pull requests to GitHub, a marketing agent for campaigns, or a mailing agent for outreach. Then, just assign tasks and watch them get completed automatically. Plus, Dart integrates seamlessly with your existing workflow through their MCP server, connecting directly to Claude, ChatGPT, and other AI tools you're already using. Most features are completely free, with premium options starting at just $8 per month. Check out Dart through the link in the description. It might just transform how you work. Now, back to the video. To start, if you just want to use it, you can run this command and it will get installed. But if you want to install and also edit some things in it, then you'd have to clone it first. Cloning it is simple. You just run the git clone command and then you can run the npm install command, which will install all the dependencies for you. After that, you can easily run the npm run build command to build it, and then you need to run the link command in order to make it accessible as a simple command that can be run from almost anywhere. Anyway, either way you install it, in the end, you can run it with the grok command. Once you run it, you'll see that it starts up pretty easily. Now you can see the prompt box, and you can also type in your prompt here. If you hit slash, you'll see multiple slash commands. To start, you'd need to configure the API key for Grok code. Doing this is simple. You can go to Grok and fetch the API key from there. They have a free tier with about 1 million tokens per day or some limit like that. So, you should be able to use it for free. Anyway, just get that and configure the API key as well. After configuring it, make sure that you also select the model that you want to use. It comes by default with the Kimi K2, which I also think is the best option. But you can switch between GPT OSS, Quen, and more as well. Anyway, once that is set up, we also have a few more options like Help, Reasoning, and Clear. Help will show you all the information about it as well. To toggle auto approval, you can hit Shift plus Tab, and it will auto approve the stuff for you. You can also use Control plus C to exit the application. Similarly, there's the slash reasoning command that enables the CLI to also show reasoning traces for a model if reasoning is enabled for any, which is also awesome nonetheless. You can also use the slash clear command that frees up your context as well as clears the terminal interface and makes it fresh, which is also awesome. Now, Let's try to do something with it as well. I'm going to ask it to build me a simple Minesweeper game using HTML, CSS, and JS. Now, I want it to just show off how it works. As you can see, it goes ahead and starts to generate some stuff. In a bit, it will show you the diff of the changes here as well. It then allows you to approve, always approve, or reject it as well if you want to do that. So, in a bit, it will go ahead and apply the changes, and then in a bit, it gets done. You can now run this, and you can see that this works quite well. That is mainly how it works. I think that it works well and is super fast. You can use any model that Grok has, and just make it work well in that sense, and use it accordingly. I like it, and you can actually use this as a boilerplate to change anything within it and maybe customize it to be used for your purposes or anything like that. You can also edit it to use it with any other API, as well as change the system prompt or add more stuff like custom slash commands or additional tools like web search, merge conflict resolver, knowledge graph builder, or anything like that. It doesn't seem to have MCP support and stuff yet, and I hope that is also added to it as well. I liked it and thought to talk about this as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.